Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to Mind Over Math. Today we're going to be talking about the long division of polynomials. Enjoy. over math for the next few moments. I want to go over long division. This is mainly from an algebra point of view. Using the DMSB, which means divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. This will help simplify the process and keep you on track as to what the next step would be. So at first here, I'll start out real simple, just to make sure you're clear. Dividing 12 by 3 is the same as 3 into 12. And when you divide 3 into 12, 12 you, get, you get a zero denominator. Now let's do some vocabulary. The vocabulary we use is divisor on the outside, dividend on the inside, and quotient is the solution when you do division. Another way to write division is the fraction, 12 over 3. And of course, the last way is using that calculator symbol, the division symbol, 12 divided by 3. Notice the order on these. To check a division problem, in this very simple example, you take the divisor times the quotient. Divisor times the quotient will give you the dividend. Let's take that a step further. Let's do 13 divided by 3. Of course, that doesn't go in evenly. It's 4 and you get a remainder of 1. But now for the bigger lesson, notice when you check it, the divisor times the quotient plus the remainder gives you the dividend, 13. So as I rewrite this, we're going to use more math, Algebra 2, pre-calc level of writing. The divisor we're going to call D of X, which means it has a X in it. That's what our divisor is going to have. And the quotient is going to have an X in it. And even the remainder can have an X in it. When you multiply those and add them, just like on the example above, you get the dividend. We will call that f of x. So let's do a tougher problem. These are the ones we're here to work on. Now this can be written, again, the three ways. When you see it, you know you need to do long division. So the first way there in yellow. The second way is a fraction. The third way is using the division symbol. And the fourth way is the way we will do it with the long division symbol. On another video, I'll be doing these with synthetic division. So let's do this. So the first thing we want to notice is you take the lead term x cubed of the dividend and divide it by the lead term of the divisor. Isn't it interesting we don't use these at first or the 5. When we do, we get x squared. So notice this up here is x squared. I like to put it in the x squared column and that way when you run out of columns you know exactly that you're done. So now we multiply through x squared times x, x cubed, x squared times negative 5, negative x squared. Now that's divide, then we multiplied. Here's the divide. Here's the multiply. Now we subtract. Subtract means I change as positive to negative, negative to positive. And I add them. And then I bring down. 
So as I do this, this gave me negative x squared. And I bring down the next column, negative x. Then I start over. Now I take the lead term, negative x squared, and I divide it by the lead term divisor x, which gives me negative x. And of course, that goes right up in the quotient. And again, I'm going to take the negative x times the x minus 5, and I get negative x squared plus 5x. What's next? Well, I multiplied. I divided here. I multiplied to get this. Now I subtract. So I change both signs. Now notice the first column always drops out. If it doesn't drop out, you did something wrong there. It has to drop out. When we bring down, we get negative 6x plus 30. And we divide then. Now we're starting over. Divide negative 6x is the lead term by the divisor x. And we get negative 6. So where's that go? Up above the 30. So as I multiply that through and come down here, I will get a remainder of 0, which is the key. Now that's good news when you get a remainder of 0 because that means x minus 5 is a factor of this long polynomial right here. If you don't get a remainder of zero, you need to see my next video on synthetic division and long division. So here's what we got. So I could say to check it and factor, did you know that x squared minus x minus 6 factors into x minus 3 times x plus 2? And then the x minus 5 comes down now. If I multiplied all these out, I would end up right back here where I started. But I set each of these equal to zero for a reason. And I set each factor equal to zero. That's called the zero product property. And I get x equals 5, x equals 3, x equals negative 2. Now in this form, Right here, all the factors, all three of them, notice this is x cubed, all three of them, I call those factors forms. Those are in factors. The next step here, down here, these are called zeros. They're actually x-intercepts. So I wanted to show you what we got on a graph. And you don't have to do this part. This is more for math analysis level kids. Um, this notice is x is negative 2, that came from this factor, x is 3, that came from this factor, and x is 5. This is a cubic graph. Uh, by the way, there's also a uh, y-intercept at 30 up there. We can't show that in this diagram. Uh, one more thing, did you know that the equation of the x-axis was y equals 0. And did you know that the equation of the y-axis is x equals 0? It's kind of opposite to what most people are used to thinking. and uh, But not here. We're trying to get that. Now, this came off of desmos.com. If you want to go in there and put down the problem, uh, actually, if you put this in, also the second one, in that form, you'll see this exact same line. Well, let's do this one more time. So here's a much uh, more difficult one. So we divide 2x cubed, that's the lead term, over 2x is x squared. Where does that go? Up above the x squared in the quotient. Multiply through. Now I'm going to move fairly quickly through this. Multiply through. Subtract. So I end up with 2x squared. Then I bring down the negative 43x. Then I divide again the lead term. 2x squared divided by 2x is 1x. And of course, that goes up in the quotient. Multiply through again. 
and change the signs. That's second. Notice those are in the red. And I get negative 40x, which again, I divide by the lead term of the divisor and get negative 20. As I multiply that through and change signs, I get a remainder of zero. So this was our answer. I want to remind you that in order to factor this top uh, quadratic up here, I took the negative 20 and the positive 1 and factored them into 5 and negative 4. So that tells me this factors into x plus 5, x minus 4, and the original, which gave me a remainder of 0, is 2x minus 3. So 2x minus 3 set equal to 0 is 1 and a half, and x plus 5 set equal to 0 is negative 1. And again, these are called zeros or roots, this bottom layer. They're also called solutions or x-intercepts. And one more time, here's a diagram of this actual graph. Here were the factors, and here are the x-intercepts. So I want you to see that this will continue. There is a part two, but uh, at least you get an idea here of how the graph is the x-intercepts. Thanks for checking out our many videos on trig, geometry, and algebra. Subscribe down below, give us a thumbs up, comments on topics you want.